Welcome to my daughter's bedroom. I just made this bed especially for my daughter and I'm guessing you want to make a bed like this as well or you just want to see the process. Well, without further ado, let's jump into my workshop so you can see how you can put this together and how to get your free plans for this bed as well. Right then, let's start the project, shall we? The material I'm using for this project is rough sawn pine, so I need to mill it first and go through the whole process. Now, if you want to learn some more details about milling process, I have got a separate video about it, and I'm gonna leave a, a link to that in the description of this one. First of all, all the boards I'm just cutting to rough sizes. So adding about two inches or about five centimeters a little bit extra for the final cut a little bit later on and yes you do need a fair amount of timber for this project as you can see there's quite a lot of pieces that i've cut down and a few more as i said now i'm just going through the milling process so one face of on all the boards that needs to be 100 percent nice and flat Then one edge on all the boards needs to be nice, straight and flat as well. After that I'm just taking all the boards through my thickness planer so that will sort out the other face. Plus at this stage I'm taking all the pieces to the correct thickness I needed. Now you only need to go through the milling process if for example you've got rough boards like I do. However, you can buy plain boards already and save yourself a bit of time. And now on my table saw, I'm taking all the boards to the correct width and sorting out the second edge. And as you can imagine, it was a pretty lengthy process as well. Always remember about the safety when you operate. So A, wear a dust mask, then some hearing protection and make sure you've got a proper push stick or push block like I do when you're operating with machinery. Now it's time to go to my mitre saw station and cut all the pieces to the final lengths. In total, I've got 39 of those little slats. So yeah, I've set up a stop block to make the work a little bit faster, as you can see. Now in this project, we're gonna be using two sets of angles. One is 22.5 degrees and the other one is 45 degrees to create that house shape, okay? So the main leg, as you can see here, is with 22.5 degrees. However, the other piece that connects to the leg and creates the roof is, uh, you need to do two cuts on the angle. One is the 22.5 degrees, which connects to the leg, and the other one at the top is at 45 degrees. So, as you can see, this piece has got two different degrees. This one is 45, and the other one is 22.5. And again, to speed up the process for all four parts, I'm just using a stop block on my mitre station, making sure everything is nice and accurate. Now the timber I'm using has got a lot of um, knots and small voids and making sure that I've got no issues with those knots later on, I'm just using some CA glue with an activator just to make sure they stay in place, they don't move and then don't fall out. Now at this stage, I just want to sand all the pieces down. I'm starting with grid uh, 80, then 100, 120 and 150. It's just a lot easier to get it nice and smooth at this stage. The next crucial part of this project is to mark every single piece so you know exactly where it's going. Obviously, I've got my own system of marking everything. You need to come up with yours. Now, the main joinery I'm using for this project is dowels, okay? So it's a very unforgiving technique of joinery and I need to make sure all my marks are correct and I'm not gonna lose myself later on with the amount of pieces I've got in this project. So yes, the crucial element is 
is to mark everything up. Now, if you want to learn some more information about that genre and the jig I'm using, I actually do have a separate video on that. And it's a super cheap and easy to use jig and will definitely do the job. As you will see during the project, I had no issues with it. And I more or less the whole bed is constructed uh, based on dowel joinery. So as you can imagine, there was plenty holes drilled on that day for the slats. Uh, and now I'm just preserving the holes um, that will accommodate those slats and that will create the first piece of this bed. Fortunately, the jig allows me to transfer the holes from one piece to another and that's exactly what I'm doing. And all the slats will go in the correct places with no issues at all, which you'll see in just a few moments. Now, the glue I'm using here is tight bond free. Um, I do like to use it for projects like this as it does give you a little bit longer working time. So you don't have to worry that the glue will set on you. So yeah, that extra few minutes actually do make a difference, especially with this amount of slats, dowel, and joinery as you can imagine that would be very stressful if you uh, were to use a different type of uh, wood glue here but yeah everything came in nicely together with no issues everything is nice and straight so just whack a few clamps on this and wait for the glue to dry and more or less in the same way i'm gonna glue and clamp every other piece of this bed that you'll see in the video now when the glue dried and you cleaned it up a little bit it's now time to give a bit of round over to all the hard edges i'm using my cordless trend router to do that with a tiny tiny round over so you basically want to break all the hard edges absolutely on every single part of this bed okay now i think it's just the best way to do it at this stage rather than waiting for the whole bed to be finished it's just much easier to do it now i think okay now it's time to sort out the structure that creates the um, house shape as you can see again using the same jig to make dowels uh, in the pieces that are under at the angle of 22.5 uh, and there's no issues with that at all and you're gonna have connections of angles um, that are 22.5 together and 45 together and the jig will help you achieve perfect joinery with no issues at all even with angled uh, pieces like this one check that out absolutely perfect fit now one thing i'm going to suggest to you is to use a vise for this is just makes everything so much easier to do i've got this diy vise that i made from some pipe clamps if you want to find out about that i've got a separate video on that as well now over here again, please make sure to mark your work correctly. Where are your faces? Which side is going out? And um, you know, that way you're not gonna misalign your dowel joinery. It's super, super important to make the correct marks on your piece of work. Make sure you do have a good drill bit for this as there is plenty of holes uh, that you're gonna need to pre-drill in this project. And as you can see, I'm just transferring the marks to a second piece. Um, so yeah, it's really that simple to use the jig and it speeds up the process immensely. Now at one of the sides, uh, we need to make sure that there's an opening for our child to be able to, well, get into the bed. So as you can see, um, the fence I've made is obviously not the full length of the bed. And I do want to have the ability to take that fence off in the future when my daughter gets a little bit older. So there's no risk of her falling off the bed anymore. Okay, so what I'm doing here, again, I've used dowels to connect this, but I don't want to use wood glue. So I'm just pre drilling some larger holes that will accommodate some screws okay so the joinery here will be dowels plus screws to hold it in place so it's not a permanent fixture and will give me the ability to remove the fence in the future now the drill bit i'm using right now is 10 millimeters in diameter okay so that will allow me to get the screw head pass 
a little bit deeper. And now, as you can see, I've got this really massive long drill bit. And um, what that will do, it will guide the screw to go straight down and is basically making sure that it's not gonna split my boards when I'm gonna be driving my screws through. So yeah, this process is required for this part. Uh, making sure that the screws go deep enough to catch the fence and making sure that uh, the screws will not split the wood either and check this out that's the screws that we're going to be installing in this piece okay so the head goes through and it will give us enough hold for this project so let's put this together as you can see the dowels will hold everything in place i um, just going to use a couple of clamps to make sure it's not going to move on me and it will be in the correct position and now i'm just going to drive in the screws to hold everything together And finally, few more holes to go for the dowel joinery. As you can imagine, that is, well, it was quite boring and repetitive with the dowel joinery for this project. But yes, few more holes to go and we're almost ready to start putting the bed together. Now I've made myself these uh, blocks, okay, they will help me in gluing up the angled pieces together, the two 22.5 degrees and the 45 degrees um, that we're going to be gluing together. Obviously, you know, you are guided by dowels, however, you do need a bit of pressure from a clamp to make sure the angle um, um, joints do come together and they create a nice and strong bond so as you can see that's how i'm using the blocks with a um, clamp as well to give that really strong uh, connection here guys and now let's put both of the pieces together it's a fairly easy and simple process to do with those extra blocks and you know it's more or less hassle and stress free like this So yeah, marrying up both of the pieces together, adding a couple of clamps and more or less that's it. You don't really need to add massive pressure as long as you've cut out the pieces at correct angles and the dowels went in perfectly, you won't have any issues at all. And just leave it to cure. On each long side of the bed, I'm just installing some uh, pieces of timber that will basically become a base for our slats for the mattress. Okay, it's nothing special here. I'm just using screws, but you can use wood glue and screws. However, I think screws will do just fine. Now the whole glue up I do suggest you do in stages, it's just easier that way. Uh, the fence part as you can see, I'm just applying glue to it now. I've glued that up separately and as you can see the vertical pieces uh, with the angled, with the 22.5 angled, I glued them up separately as well. It's just so much easier to do it like that rather than trying to glue up everything in one go. That would be ever, ever so hard to do. And you know, still the tight bond will dry relatively quick. You just need to give it at least 30, 40 minutes. Um, but obviously, you know, I would definitely wait a couple of hours before it sets and then you just can carry on with the remaining parts. So this is a bit of a fiddly process here. If you've got a second pair of hands, that would probably be the best. Uh, but as you can see on the video, we can do it on your own as well. Make sure you've got some nice large clamps like I do from Bessie. These are absolutely fantastic clamps. And I do, do always recommend them to anybody. Parallel clamps is definitely the way forward in projects like these. And on the top, I'm just going to use two parallel clamps on each part and then add a couple of clamps to those clamps. It gives me enough pressure to hold it together. But to be fair, with applying the um, two clamps at the bottom, the joint came in together perfectly no gaps at all. So I had a perfect 45 degree angle there and 
you know, is just to make sure that a bit of glue squeeze that comes out and making sure that I've got a nice connection here. That's why I've used the additional clamping. With this bed, I need to have the ability to take it apart, okay? So the front of the back, that's in the shape of the house, that's all glued together. However, as you can see here, I've just made some marks through which I'm gonna install these types of screws. Um, they are quite thick and will give me enough strength and stability in the whole project. You do need a special drill bit for those. But um, the piece of timber I was using for this project is a little bit thicker. So I'm just gonna pre-drill a 10 millimeter hole first so the screw will go a little bit deeper as a whole. And that will give me the ability um, to detach you know, the main components of the bed. So I've got the um, two house-shaped components and then the long sides, okay? As you probably have guessed, I have used dowel joinery to connect the long pieces with the house shaped pieces. So I just needed a fastener to hold everything in place. Now, if you don't need the bed to be, you know, detachable and it, you're fine with it to be in one part, just use the dowels and wood glue and that will be absolutely fine. For me to be able to take this bed upstairs to my uh, daughter's bedroom, I need to have the ability to actually take it in pieces. So yeah, in total, I'm going to have four larger pieces of this bed. Now I have used masking tape to put all the measurements and everything on this as I didn't want to spend a couple of hours on sanding again. So uh, I do recommend this method. And as I can see, I'm just driving in the, uh, the screws through the pieces now. And there you go, that's now sorted. Now you can actually buy some plastic um, end caps to hide those holes. However, for me, it's not a problem and I'm gonna leave it as is. Now at the top of the bed itself, i am just got the stretcher that I'm installing in the same fashion as I did um, the size just a second ago. So yes, that will be held by the screws again, as you can see on the video. Now there's one more support stretcher at the back of the bed and again same principle pre-drill the hole and drive in the screw to hold everything together. Now I did have to take everything apart to apply the finish and the finish in my case is clear varnish. Okay it's water based and I'm going to add two coats and denibbing in between coats. However you can paint this project uh, any color you want to suit your needs and the decoration of the bedroom itself. One thing I forgot to do is to pre-install this slats for the mattress. Okay, so the first slat and the last one will actually be screwed into the base of the bed. Okay, as you can see here, I'm just doing that right now. When that's done, I've placed all the slats in more or less the places I wanted them to be. And I've just got this really thick fabric um, that I'm screwing to each slat to hold it together. So the slats will remain in the places I need them to be. And there you go. That's how it looks like. The slats inside with the fabric. And there you go guys, all the pieces are now in my daughter's bedroom, so it's time to put everything together. However, I'm just gonna use a bit of YouTube magic and speed up the process for you. So let the magic happen. And there you go guys, uh, the bed in full glory. I'm really pleased how it turned out, but the biggest question is if the little girl is happy with it as well. I think she is. <laughs> and there you go, guys. Absolutely fabulous bed. Super comfortable with the mattress in now. And it just looks great. I'm really happy how it turned out. The support beams and everything is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Nice and sturdy bed. 
and obviously the plans for this bed will be for free for you guys and um, they will be available on my Patreon page but you don't have to be subscribed to that obviously if you want to support the channel and you know help me build projects like this a bit more often your support via Patreon is absolutely much appreciated however you can get the plans absolutely for free and the link to those plans is just down below in the description of this video now also I'm going to be making a draw just um, over here underneath the bed it will be on wheels so you can wheel it out and put you know all the bed sheeting everything in there that will come in the near future I will also make plans for that and um, attach it to these plans for the bed as well so watch out for that future video so if you're not a subscriber to my channel make sure to subscribe to it as yeah the draw will come in the near future however i also got plenty other videos on my channel woodworking related and workshop projects anything like that i've got some really cool playlists especially for you just over here so hopefully you're going to click on those playlists find a video that piques your interest and i'll see you on that video there take care